Welcome to Matters Financial and Geopolitical from a Frontier. As always, thank you for stopping by. I must say I'm looking forward to my break. I'll tell you about that in a moment. The US raised interest rates a quarter point as expected yesterday. Take a look at this chart which compares the Fed funds rate uh, with the 10-year yield. Uh, we are at historical lows, you'll notice. Fed rate hike expectations for next year drop following this dovish FOMC meeting. Home thoughts, I was 11 years old and this was the first single I ever bought from a shop called Asanans in Mombasa, because that was how it rolled in Mombasa then. The song in question was by Boney M called Sunny, 1976, but curiously I prefer the B-side, have a listen, Boney M, loving or leaving. I like this photograph, the rooftop pool at the Freehand Hotel, looked very inviting. For some reason that took me to the Kinks, Waterloo Sunset, and so much of my life was spent commuting Putney to Waterloo and the Waterloo and City. Salman Rushdie, Midnight's Children, what's real and what's true aren't necessarily the same. Fundamentalism isn't about religion, it's about power. And so looking forward to the university students returning and spending time at the coast with them. And uh, on that note, let me put up some photographs I've taken. This is Diane Beach, taken in 2014. This is a photograph of Hannah and myself on the beach in the early evening when we'd swum for like an hour. It's fantastic. And one of Hannah and her cousins from Chicago when they went on a boat ride. Political reflections let this sink in. Jefferson Beauregard Sessions' Senate seat was taken by a civil rights lawyer who convicted Klansman, justice is sweet. The African-American turnout in Alabama on December the 12th, 2017 exceeded the record last set there when Obama was on the ticket in November 2008. That's big. Um, so look, it is quite an extraordinary result. Um, Sense, but you know, the, pre the president would have been wiser to have got behind a different type of candidate than one who was going to rally the opposition so strongly. Former apprentice star Omarosa Maningo plans to leave the White House next month and apparently um, her security clearance was uh, blocked and there was quite some drama. What a picture this is, Russia Al Qaeda. China and India sail into choppy waters in New Great Game, that's the Asia Times, the new Silk Roads, known as the Belt and Road Initiative, will weave and interconnect six major economic corridors. Geopolitically, from China's point of view, CPEC, and especially the development of Guada, is essential to its trade and maritime strategy. In one swoop, it bypasses the South China Sea, the Strait of Malacca, and the Bay of Bengal. Saying that instead of potentially risking disruption by the US and its allied Indo-Japanese navies, China could use CPEC's terminal port, Guada, as its base of trading operations for greatly shortening its sea lines of communication with Africa. Potentially, this is why CPEC could clash with AAGC, or the Asia-Africa Growth Corridor, an economic cooperation agreement between the governments of India and Japan. In the end, it comes down to the robust competition between India and China, from the Gulf of Oman to the Arabian Sea, a prime stretch of the Indo-Pacific region, of course. It is all about an ongoing port rivalry between Guada in Pakistan, Baluchistan, and Chabahar in Iranian Baluchistan, as they are barely 80 kilometers apart. Um, India has already finalized plans to build a 900 kilometer railway from 
Chabahar to Bamiya in Afghanistan and is already building a 220 kilometer road in Nimruz, which will be extended to Chabahar, saying this actually links the Middle East, Central Asia, South Asia. A 1600 kilometer coastline from the Strait of Hormuz to Karachi. It simply could not be more strategic with its natural resources of oil, natural gas, uranium, coal, gold and iron ore. Unlike Bandar Abbas, Chabahar is Iran's only deep water port, just as Buada, uh, and provides crucial access to the Indian Ocean. As much as scholars insist that the China threat narrative is doomed to fail, it is no wonder New Delhi essentially interprets Guada as the world's second biggest economy in preparing a strategic naval base and listening post. This, in turn, would threaten the Indian Navy and the Arabian Sea as far as the Gulf of Oman while encircling it in West Asia. Saying it makes us a heady vortex churning with power projections, spheres of influence, security, and commerce. In the end, the only certainty. Is this shadow play involving China, India, Iran, and Pakistan with the US as an active third party at the heart of the new great game in Eurasia? Of course, you'll remember the Sri Lankans have also had to disgorge the Haman Boto port to the Chinese. And at the end of August this year, I was writing about how China is also Narendra Modi's face in the Docklam Plateau. Um, it's as if Xi Jinping is goading Narendra Modi, who would be seriously ill-advised to take on the Chinaman in that remote plateau. So he's up there in the plateau where he hasn't moved. He's down there in Sri Lanka. He's there in Guada. He's pretty much got India surrounded. Um, à Paris, un jour et de Afrique, says the Liberation. One must assume that he will be deal-making for his future, said one Saudi banker talking about al Walid. But in a broader sense, he is done now. Now it is Prince al Walid who is engulfed in a crisis following his detention last month as part of Riyadh's anti-corruption crackdown. But in his hour of need, nobody has publicly come to his aid as billions of dollars have been wiped off his fortune and the investment firm he founded, Kingdom Holding Company, has been plunged into uncertainty. KHC has lost nearly a fifth of its value since Prince al Walid's detention, uh, falling to eight and a half billion dollars. Um, KHC is Prince al Walid's main investment vehicle and in his absence, meaningful activity at the holding firm has been suspended, bankers say. So he has not disgorged whatever they're requiring him to disgorge, as yet, it seems, his holding firm. Israeli intelligence minister invites Saudi crown prince to visit Israel, according to Haaretz. And I wrote previously about the capture of a 32-year-old wannabe king. Seoul glistens like a jewel on the Korean peninsula, and as often that comparison done between Pyongyang at night and Seoul. International markets, let's go on. The currency markets, Euro dollar 118.23, uh, dollar index 93.939, Japanese yen 112.60, Swiss franc 0.9846, the pound 134.25. The Australian dollar is at 0 0.7665, India rupees 64.315, South Korea won 1086.97, and of course that's getting a bit of a peace dividend after Tillerson went out on a limb, they got slapped down. Brazilian real 331, Egyptian pound 17.8740, and the South African rand 1346.50, but obviously we're going to have some fireworks imminently. Um, in particular because the ANC will choose their new leader this weekend. Dollar index, I'll put up a three-month chart. We're back below that key level I've spoken about so frequently of 93.50. We're at 93.389. We're doing a lot of work around here. Um, let's keep an eye on things. U.S. two-year yields dropped as the market uh, took 
Fed as being benign. Euro dollar 118.25 last, we got a bit of a pop yesterday. Bitcoin seems to fit a stable distribution, cannot rule out couching collaboration with finance quant. This is NM Talent. Note that this makes practically any price level possible, whether a hundred thousand or a hundred, and I think that's the important point. Feds Yellen, Bitcoin is a highly speculative asset, not stable source of value, not legal tender. We're last trading at 16,260. Uh, the main price levels viewed on the quant depth mapper. This is from Nico. Take a look at what he's saying. Um, commodity markets gold headed for the biggest gain in three weeks after the Fed rate hike. We're now trading at, let me take a look, 12.58, and we were at 12.41 uh, for that announcement. WTI crude oil, $56.65. People are becoming bearish, um, of, all, of all the people I'm following, but very wary of a last surge to a fresh 2017 high before that sell-off. Um, I'm of the view that we're going to trend a little bit higher from here. Do you know the difference between heated and unheated rubies? Can you spot an emerald that has been oiled versus one that contains no oil? Probably not. But those enhancements greatly affect the value of stones. Moving on to Africa, Paris officials are accused of covering up their role in arming and then shielding perpetrators of the Rwanda genocide. Rwanda's government published a report on Wednesday that it had commissioned from a U.S. law firm alleging that France helped arm and protect the perpetrators of genocide before, during and after the 100-day period from April 1994 which up to 70% of the Tutsi population was killed. Louise Mushikiwabo, Rwanda's foreign minister, said some French officials had got away with murder, literally. The report by Washington law firm Cunningham Levy News, which was handed to the French government by Rwanda's ambassador to Paris on Tuesday, urges Paris to release classified documents relating to the period. The news report which Kigali says is the most complete account of French complicity to date, accuses French officials of continuing to conceal their own role in the genocide and to undermine attempts to prosecute genocide suspects, many of whom live in France. Although Rwanda was a Belgian colony, France gained significant influence in the Central African country from the 1970s and was a backer of the government of Juvenal Habriar Rima, whose death in a plane crash in April 1994 triggered the genocide. To my mind, promoting economic diversification is akin to weaving a beautiful traditional fabric, Christine Lagarde. What do I mean by that? I mean weaving an economic fabric that is more complex, more resilient, more beneficial to all families and communities. We know that economic diversification is good for growth. Diversification is also tremendously important for resilience. This is not a defensible military outpost. This is a death trap. This is the outpost that was attacked in DR Congo. High Avenue of Approach is literally inside the camp. No barriers or standoff in the rear of the camp is backed against a river. This is a death trap. Katanga mining soared on news it will produce 34,000 tons of cobalt in 2019 to become the world's biggest miner of metal. South African oil shares up 13.21% year to date. Dollar versus Rand, last I checked, 13.4650, but we've got a serious event risk around the corner. My piece over the weekend was about Steinhoff and Christo Visa, who was known as the man with the Midas touch. And I was complaining, saying, as I scrambled to catch up with the story, I was amazed at how it was being reported in South Africa. 
which proudly advances the idea that it is the most liquid market in Africa. SABC News was reporting the story from the angle of black disempowerment that Steinhoff did not have sufficient BEE representation. This was the fundamental flaw. JSC was arguing that the prime listing was in Frankfurt and therefore the primary investigation was being led by the Europeans. No one seemed keen, and they're still not that keen actually, on establishing the facts and sizing the whole other than opining on the share price collapse and Christo's exponentially reducing fortune. I called it a forensic intellectual cul-de-sac, seemingly across vast swathes of South African media. Legendary Stan Miller, who by now you will know I admire immensely, was short Steinhoff. Have a listen to the interview after about two minutes. Um, the ECB is keeping zombie companies like Steinhoff alive and half the street news, says he. Steinhoff appears to be a massive fraud, says Magda Wojcicka. Um, inside Steinhoff's house of cards, financial mail, uh, Steinhoff, Steinhoff chart from Bloomberg Gadfly. A pop singer in Egypt has reportedly been sentenced to two years in prison for inciting debauchery and immortality in a music video. Nigerian oil shares up 43.39% so far this year. Ghana Stock Exchange is up 49.98% so far this year. The FRX in Bank will offer post Mugabe Zimbabwe $1.5 billion to support its economic revival efforts. Finance Minister Chinamasa said the visit and investment by FRX in Bank sends very good signals to the rest of the world that Zimbabwe is open to do business, is open for investment, and this is the support I think we deserve. He said the economy will likely grow by more than 4.5% in 2018 the country continues to receive support from critical players. I believe the economy is going to be for some very good times, he said. In fact, one and a half billion is the entire call that's required to stabilize, stabilize the now, about which I was speaking on the 20th of November. Look at this VC funding in Africa up 8.7 times between 2012 and 2016. Startup growth funding in Africa up 4.4 times between 2015 and 2016. NASA insists electoral reforms a condition for talks with Uhuru. He's already signaled that they might as well whistle. And uh, I think essentially the opposition have been properly guillotined and it's over. And they've really got to re-strategize and work out a way forward because certainly the way they've charted so far has been backwards. Jamie Bora's investor poll nets 500 million shillings. It's a tier three bank. What Kenyans have been searching for in 2017, according to Google Trends and White Hash? Uh, Nairobi All Share was hit with a program sell yesterday, a quite good volume. Uh, retreated 1.06% off a 35 month high. It's up 30.6% year to date. Hennessy 20 up 16.47% year to date. It fell 0.56% yesterday. Once again, thank you.